Welcome guys to the podcast, a brand new episode of the podcast stream. This is the podcast for the lawyers, doctors, entrepreneurs, business owners, and professionals pull it together because we care and share. Today we have a really special guest, Dr. Alberto Rivera. He's my very special guest. We'll talk about four different topics. We'll talk about why do we get the mail, why do we get the bold in males. We'll talk about hormone replacement. We'll talk about pesticide. And we'll talk about TRT. So welcome Dr. Alberto Rivera as my special guest today. Igor, thank you for the invite. You know that I would never say no. <laughs> <laughs> so my Dr. Alberto been in the business, what, 21 plus years? Just 20, 20 something years, plus. yes. So from what school you graduated? I came from a, a medical school in uh, the Sao Puerto Rico. It's called Ponce School of Medicine. Well, it was called back then. It has changed names over the years. Nice. So I'm, I always got the question and intrigue you with the question. How do you decide to become a doctor? The call, the call came very early. I'm, I'm, I'm the son of a, of a physician and a nurse. And on my dad's side, everybody's a physician. My uncles, even my younger brother. And then from my mom's side, all my aunts, except one, are nurses. So for me to go into the medical field, it just was the natural history of the disease of being human. Oh, wow. So <laughs> my whole experience working as a pharmaceutical rep before I discovered so many doctors. So it was, this was my wish to one day work so hard like you doc does to open up the podcast, bring the professionals. So we, I all believe we, we got to care and yes. share. Do you agree doctor with that? I agree totally brother. And you came from, uh, originally from Puerto Rico, right? That is correct. You born and raised there? That's correct, brother. How long have you been in uh, Florida State? Well, in Florida, I moved here back in 2017, but um, I've been back and forth from the States since after uh, medical school. I moved to New York in the year 2001 and did my residency in physical medicine and rehabilitation there. Then I came to Florida in 2004 and spent a year at the University of Florida, UF in Gainesville under the direction of Dr. James Sachison, who was my, uh, my fellowship director. <laughs> He's the guy that trained me into the awesome uh, techniques in pain management. There was also another guy that I loved dearly there was Dr. Kalman. He also teach me the interventional side. Oh, they wow. got me into the procedures area of medicine. But also what this guy left in me was the pursuit for greatness in the field, is to always try to innovate. Because in medicine, either you're growing and you're getting better, or you're shrinking and getting obsolete. Nice. So you, we're going to talk about some innovations today, right? Oh, definitely. So we how we can help others and communities, especially I, when I was a pharmaceutical rep, I used to deal with a lot of hormone replacement. I understand a lot of in the in the females, especially we got a certain thing. So I like to know that our audience will take some really good advices today from the doctor. And your doctor, if they have any questions, we'll also give those information at the end of the show. Where they can reach you? Where is your location? I am located in, in Winter Park, Florida. It's, uh, the address is 201 West Canton Avenue. We're there um, five days a week, and we're ready to um, answer any questions and to help everybody that needs the help and wants to request it. We're Thank there. you, doctor. And we'll also, with the community, share his phone number and the address as well. So, doctor, I think the last the fun begin <laughs> to, educate, uh, to educate our audience about certain things. So we have uh, four topics. So my first question, doctor, like, we got a hair loss in the mail. First of all, am I or you a good candidate for that? Wow. I can tell you. Who's a good candidate for, <laughs> yeah. for hair loss treatment yes. in males? Any one of us whose hair starts thinning, okay. I will start pursuing treatment. Because getting bald is not a one-day event. It's a process. It can begin in your 20s and then... At the end of your teddies, people can be bald. I have some other people that have late onset baldness. But what is important about male uh, baldness patterns is that the treatment should start the earlier because the earlier you intervene, the better is the outcome. Okay, okay. So how they can find you and uh, what is your process actually if I'm your patient? You know, I come over there and meet with you. What is the process from A to Z? Right. So that our audience uh, uh, a little bit knows about you, so they kind of not getting surprised while they're getting into your location. So what is the process? Okay. First first thing is we, we book an appointment. I like to separate a time okay. of day that we can talk freely. I don't like to have a lot of people waiting while you're there because we need to talk, and I don't know what your problems are going to be and what things we need to work on. Makes sense. And 
a lot of people come for the normal things, erectile dysfunction, hair loss treatment, or they're just gaining weight. But when we sit down, the problem sometimes is not that they're going bald. There's a hormonal imbalance. Oh. There's a health issue that's causing that. So that's what I like those treatments to be performed under physician guidance because I don't want you to look pretty. I want you to be healthy inside and your health projects your beauty. Oh, wow. wow. Because the best it's the best enhancer. Nice. nice. So basically you are what's it inside, not outside. Exactly. Okay. And I know our next question will be about peptides. I know that's your favorite. <laughs> and then may I ask you, doctor, why is your favorite? Why do you believe that you, you a couple minutes ago, you mentioned that uh, it's a new way of treatment. Yeah. And can you share a little bit? Can you elaborate a little bit more on it? Definitely, definitely. <laughs> peptides are the future of medicine. We have been encapsulated in an environment controlled by certain regulatory agencies and companies that want us to use certain drugs. But these drugs, what they don't tell us is they need to have the ability to be patented. Okay. So that means that no natural occurring products will be patented. So if they're not, they cannot be patented because they do exist in nature, like it happens with proteins, and no one can get a patent and make money out of that, then they're discarded, they're put on the side. So we have, a few hundreds of those are already well-studied peptides, which are small sequences of amino acids. Amino acids are the building blocks of protein. This is present in beans, in fruits, in veggies, in meats, in fish. So we actually eat, we, we consume amino acids. We also have our weightlifters who make shakes with the amino acids just to boost their performance. So now what do I tell you if I can take these peptides, these small sequences, and take one of them that goes to the body inside, it's, you know, it goes to the pituitary gland, which is the gland that controls the endocrine system. And it goes there and it tells your, and your pituitary, you have some growth hormone in there stored, mm -hmm. let's, let's free it. Why is, is it doing that? It's simple, as we age, what causes our bodies to age, one of them, because there's multiple, but one of them is the amount of growth hormone. When, you, when, you, when you're young, we have lots of growth hormone. Mm -hmm. When we are teenagers, we probably have six or more pulses of growth hormone a day. Mm -hmm. When we pass 20 something, those, those pulses start pulse. declining. And then, you know, we can go to one pulse and one week pulse as we age, and that accelerates the process. So what the peptide is gonna do, it's gonna go in there and it's gonna tell the, the pituitary, secrete your own growth hormone. I don't want outside because every, every time I bring something from the outside, I'm, I'm dealing with side effects. Oh, wow. I'm telling you, but no, secrete your own because you will not have side effects from your <laughs> own growth hormone because I think it's kind of designed for you. Oh, wow. Is yeah. this because of natural process or is it because of disease? That, that means that, you know, you're asking me, is, is it aging a disease <laughs> or is it aging a natural process? Traditionally, I was told it was a natural process. Oh, wow. And from what I was taught in medical school, it's still a natural process. But if I can have a treatment against a natural process, then I consider it a disease. Wow. And to me, it's not a disease, it's a syndrome. Okay. The metabolism of drugs go down, the bone starts getting brittle, and you start getting arthritis. So there's the generation of the collagen, there's the generation in the vascular system, there's the generation in your skin, you know, it's all over the body, there is the generation and then more diseases start taking over. So when we're young, we don't have many diseases. As we age, the um, medi uh, medicine cabinets start piling up oh, wow. new remedies. And it's because of the aging process, which I think it's a disease. Now, I am not able to stop the aging process. Yeah, I wish uh, you do. <laughs> I, I, I'm in the business of aging with style. Nice. And aging healthy. Nice. Right. I, I wish I had the fountain of youth, but <laughs> you know what I can do is, you know, Having the gray hair, but feeling great. But looks good. <laughs> exactly. So there was a really interesting topic. So our next topic will be about hormone replacement therapy. So after all of that, we just talk about it. Can you a little bit of like hormone replacement therapy? What's the most important thing when it comes down to hormone replacement therapy in both genders? Okay. So first thing is I have to identify if I am a candidate to undergo this type of okay. treatments. And it's... It's not an easy process because again, many of the symptoms that will take people for hormone replacement are symptoms that we have been told that they're part of aging. Yeah. Right? Like morning woods, the morning erections, that's very important. If a guy doesn't have them, there's certainly a hormonal imbalance. It can be low testosterone or it can be other hormones. 
what we have to be aware is that not having the morning erections is a sign of ill health. Oh, wow. All right? It's that disease is coming, and it's coming soon. All right? And that's the first symptom. That's the warning sign. The body said, dude, if that's not happening, okay. there's something inside that might be there even in normal labs because disease exists in normal labs, and that's the worst. I was taught in medical school that in order to be sick, the test had to be positive. Oh, wow. I say no because I am a human that can, and I can adapt. I can compensate, right? Okay. See the battlefield. We have soldiers that have, have been shot 10 times and they still attain what they were to, going to attain oh, wow. because the human body goes a bit further. So when that reserve that we have that keeps all those labs normal starts to um, getting exhausted, then the disease will show up. Okay, so the best thing for our audience is like if you want to be evaluated, the best thing to, to contact to you and then you're gonna take them through the process and you're gonna decide if they are not good candidate or not. So the our last question of this uh, episode, I think one of the most interesting, I think you really love about this, it's about TRT. Can you tell us a little bit, is, the, is your T truly low or really high? How would you distinguish that? First, it is distinguished by a lab test. Okay. But the best indicator of low testosterone are the symptoms. Okay. Once we start losing our waist, that's not because we got married. I was told that, you know, I've been married several times, so I, I should be, a, you know, a hundred inches in waist. Oh, that's and, a good one. Yeah. Losing sex desire. You know, I thought that it was, you know, I get tired. But no, it's not that you get tired of. It's, it's probably that the testosterone goes low, the libido, the sex desire goes oh, slow. Yeah. So we start losing interest in other areas. The energy mm -hmm. goes to the floor. The um, sleep cycle gets um, gets dysregulated. Mm -hmm. So you're gonna have these guys that they're you know turning away their partners, their spouses, their girlfriends because they don't have enough desire. But it's really something that we can correct. I advise all my friends that before they undergo the divorce, before they dump that special person, get your hormones checked because sometimes these are the things that we can get fixed. Now, is it imperative for us to address these issues? Yes because low testosterone is associated with cardiovascular disease, mm -hmm. it's associated with cerebrovascular disease, mm -hmm. um, and there's multiple other illnesses because testosterone is a key element in the endocrine system. It's our hormonal system. And the endocrine system in our body is a very messy roommate. <laughs> so anytime something gets wrong, it's like, you know, you have this messy roommate. He gets, you know, six beers in the body, and then, you know, he gets that night, and he just messes everything in the apartment. That's, we call that guy the really? endocrine system. Really? <laughs> and then you got to clean everything by yourself. <laughs> exactly. And you cannot just say, let's clean the guy and the apartment's whole no, clean. You no, you can't. You got to go there and fix the table. You got to go there and fix the kitchen. Yeah. Same thing. Slowly. Things, yeah, okay. same thing then happens. My with. last question, doctor, will be, can you boost it, your tea? If you do, how? Diet. Okay. Right. Exercise, okay, and surrounding yourself with the adequate people. I think that having the correct people in your life helps in everything. But the main thing that we need to do is exercise. Exercise, and I don't call it exercise; I call it training. Okay, because we work out in order to endure the the uh, all the stress that our body will be exposed to. So at our age, training slash exercise is not an option. Yeah, it's a it's must. Not, it's a must. It's, I think that if someone wants to be healthy, it's an obligation to, to exercise. exercise. And exercising doesn't guarantee, doesn't, it's not a warranty to, hey, you're never going to get sick. It's a warranty that you'll be able to endure. Absolutely. And I prefer enduring. I, yeah, I do too. <laughs> and you, got, you, you doctor exercise all the time, right? Just, you do? Mm. Yeah, that's the way. You want to stay in shape. You want to stay in the yeah, Well, definitely. Yeah. We, you know, most of us have difficulties, like many other professionals, yes. with time. Yes. And we all wish we could get some more workout time in, in our day. But, Igor, we don't need two hours. You know, if, if you have half an hour, you can get into that stationary bike, half an hour. You can give me 20 minutes. I can give you something that you can do in 20 minutes, either high-intensity interval trainings or a Tabata protocol. So we... 20 minutes, you get enough exercise and enough gains to at least keep your body in a good shape, okay. 
probably like someone that goes to the gym more times. I'm not saying they're gonna take get the looks and the six yes. packs. I am not in the business of getting a six pack. I am a physician. Yes. But you know, if people want to go that route, then you know the protocol is a bit different. Again, I'm in the business of feeling better, of feeling great. Okay. So overall, uh, is anything else, doctor, that you believe that we missed that you want to add it up? Well, if you if you ask me, you know, what I would advise mm -hmm. to anyone. And I, I tell this to my patients, I tell this to my friends, family, and I would love to tell it to the public. Mm -hmm. Once the energy starts going low, once the sexual desire starts decreasing, there's something very bad going on. When your energy level is not the same, when your uh, sleep cycle is dysregulated, we call that insomnia. Right? Those are symptoms that the hormones are, are out of balance. And, and I am going to repeat this, and I cannot repeat it more. Having normal labs doesn't mean absence of disease. Symptoms are the indicator that disease is present. Okay. Normal labs and normal studies and normal physical exams are only saying that that's not the way to diagnose a disease. Because if you take a chest x-ray and the person has a foot infection, the chest x-ray, it's an awesome study, yeah. but it does <laughs> nothing, all right? Okay. <laughs> Perfect. So thank you, doctor, for being our my first guest on the podcast and uh, looking for our audience all over the Facebook and social media will post. And the beautiful thing about the podcast, you can always go back, click the play or the, you can play, you can share. And the more I believe the more people we share and care, the better we get educated. And I, it was my pleasure that you are guest today. You're really also my good friend of mine as well. And if you guys have any questions, any concerns, he's a great doctor. I highly, mm -hmm. highly recommend the doctor about the Rivera. We'll give all of the information at the end of the show with how you're going to reach him. Please also do, you know, click on the Facebook as well. So, doctor, thank you so much. Igor, it has been a great pleasure to be here with you, brother. I mean, uh, I know your time is really prestigious, pristine and prestigious. So, thank you again and looking forward getting some more shows down way on the road. Thank Amen, you. Brother. Thank you.